welcome to TLC Worship, and we're glad you joined us today, and let's start with a prayer before we begin. Um, dear Lord, I thank you for letting us all have this opportunity to still be a community in these hard times and worship you together. Um, as things are starting to worsen, I just hope that you encourage all of us to still find ways to connect with each other and to just appreciate the time you've given us. And with all the confusion, I just thank you for giving me this family at TLC and helping us learn more about you. And I just bless Pastor Pete's sermon. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Will I walk through the wilderness? Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glory.
to the one, the sun, the everlasting God. Like a ring of solid gold, like a vow that is tested, like a covenant of old. Your love is enduring through the winter rain and beyond the horizon. Mercy for today, faithful you have been, and faithful you will be. Pledge yourself to me, and it's why I sing your praise. You'll ever be on my lips, You'll ever be on my lips, your praise will ever be. Scripture reading is Matthew 6, 9 through 14. Um, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we for have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
morning brothers and sisters greetings in our Lord Jesus Christ to all of you uh, and everyone who join us in United Heart worship through watching the uh, worship video the America and then the churches in America uh, have never been more in need for prayers at this time we need to be in constant prayer in humility we need to ask the the Lord's mercy uh, in light of our current pandemic situation it's getting worse and worse um, but we know that we have Heavenly Father who is in control so let's just follow the Lord's command and to pray for our leaders and to pray those who are in charge of uh, public, public health and pray for those researchers and who are uh, working on, on discovering vaccine and then also let's us let's remember those who are suffering in our prayers and those who live in a uh, certain area uh, or minority group that has a uh, few resources to resist uh, the pandemic and uh, to sustain through financial hardships um, and all kinds of uh, challenges let's also remember them in our prayers yeah let's pray Heavenly Father, we come before you with a humble heart. As you promise that if we humble our heart and seek and call on your name and repent from our evil deeds, and you will hear from us. You will hear us from heaven, and you will heal the land. So we come before you with a humble heart and say, Lord, have mercy for this country and for those who are suffering in the world. Lord, we know that, that you are still in control. You're always in control. And yet that in your mercy that we pray and that the pandemic can be shortened. We pray that the people will hear the message from heaven and they will be able to repent and come before you in humility and then to have a close relationship with you. Lord, we pray for the protection of our families and our church members. Let I pray that they will be closer with you in this challenging time and then they will have your protection both spiritually and physically. Lord, we particularly pray for on the low income and minority families in the United States were hit hard by the COVID-19 virus. Lord, you, I pray that the, you will raise up the government agency and in, in, any helping hands from the churches, from the neighborhood, to lend a helping hand for those who are in need, those who are suffering financial hardship, and then those who are suffering uh, from the health from the virus attack. Lord, I pray for the wisdom for our younger generation. It is so disheartening to hear our young people who feel they are in, they are not going to be affected. They're invincible for uh, this virus attack. And then there are people who join the COVID-19 parties uh, as if that is something to celebrate. Lord, I prayed and then that they will turn from the foolishness into wisdom and then turn from their selfishness into being considerate for other people because when they get it, perhaps they are young they're not affected as much as those who are elderly, but they have elderly members in their home, and they may affect the other people. Lord, I pray that this entire country can have the wisdom from heaven, and it will be able to pass through this uh, difficult time um, because of the COVID-19 virus. Lord, I pray that during this Lockdown time when church is closed 
physically, but it is never closed spiritually. I pray that all our ministry you will continue and brother and sister continue to be edified and to be cared for. I want to thank you for the online summer camp. Lord, you closed the door that we cannot go to Taiwan, yet you open another one. So our young people can serve those who are younger than them. And then through the online camp, and then that our younger generation can hear from you uh, the, the Bible story and then can uh, have interaction with other um, their friends and our young people can be edified through serving you, Lord, we thank you for that. We pray for the possibility of extending the missions to uh, Chula Vista and so that more people can uh, be benefited from this camp. Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity, this missions opportunity. Lord, continue to lead us to edify our brothers and sisters to care for them, to feed them, and they continue to do the world missions. Lord, you lead us in an amazing way. Always, it's always beyond our understanding, yet you continue to give us opportunity to serve you. For that, we want to thank you. Now, may our heart be open to you as we are ready to hear your word and through Pastor P. May our heart and ear be open to you and may the Holy Spirit be working in our heart so that we can hear your word and then we can put that into practice of our life. Thank you for what you're about to do. And I pray all of these in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And now today, with great joy, uh, the Pastor Pete is going to deliver God's message to us from uh, the Lord's Prayer. Pastor Pete has been uh, serving in our church uh, for many years uh, serving our youth group uh, and then serving many brothers and sisters. And then now, uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Pastor Pete to come up. Good morning, everyone. I hope um, wherever this finds you, uh, throughout the California and the world, I just uh, add a blessing to this message that all of you are well and safe as you can be under these under these times, but it's good to be uh, amongst you. It's, it's always a privilege to, to bring God's word. Um, and, it's, and I hope that you all know that God's word is, is like a sword. It's very piercing. And the part that, that his word wants to pierce the most is your heart. Let's bow our heads and Pray for God's blessing. Heavenly Father, Lord, you said your word is truth and light. Help us to understand what you wish to teach us today so that we can follow the path that your light marks out for each and every one of us. May your light, Jesus, be within. May your glory abound. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Well, the last time I preached in the English service, it was quite a dif different time. Um, it was not what we're going through now. As you all know, we're undergoing a, a great test. Um, God typically does that uh, throughout history. He does it so he wants to draw us closer, that through fear and through anxiety that we won't look to hope in the world, that we will look towards him for our hope. And that's what churches are doing. That's what churches are preaching. That's what the Word of God is all about. In today's message, I'd like to concentrate on a certain prayer that Jesus gave us that has become ours. It's become the churches. It's become 
each and every Christian. It's a personal prayer. And it's known as the Lord's Prayer. We called it in the Catholic Church growing up, we called it the Our Father. But it's indeed through Christ's words that he gave his body on earth this prayer. In these most difficult and uncertain times, many of us are praying. Some truly for the first time. Others with a ferocity that they've never had before. Because prayer is a gift to us. Jesus said, ask the Father for anything in my name and he will give it to you. But remember, when we pray, it's no different where we are. It's how we're doing it and how we, we, how we see ourselves. Remember, when we pray, we're standing before God. Yes, I know, we could be in any place, walking, in bed, with the lights off, getting ready, ready to sleep in church, with others. But when we pray, each and every one of us, it says we are standing alone before God. And we are standing in Jesus' holy name. When we pray, we shouldn't, shouldn't be, we should be calm. Our prayers should be simple and disciplined not shouting and pleading and hoping yes we do that at times not making noises but to pray faithfully in a quiet and disciplined tone for when we pray we must know who's hearing it and we must know if we deliver it in Jesus' name, it will be given to us. Sometimes the answer is no. But he always answers our prayer. Because nothing can go through God Almighty and return void. In the course of his teaching in Judea, Christ instructed us to pray in secret. We must give witness to to our belief by faith that God is everywhere and in the fullness of glory he hears and sees everything for thus says the Lord am I God when I am near and not God when I am far away can anyone hide in a dark corner without me seeing him that's from the prayer of Jeremiah and in Proverbs it says God sees our thoughts for the eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, testifies that all the churches shall know that I am the one who searches the heart and the desires. Within the Old Testament lineage of Jesus, in 1 Kings 1, there was a woman, a prophetess, named Anna. And she maintained these simple rules. She prayed quietly and modestly in the recesses of her heart. And although her prayer was in secret, her faith was evident. She didn't pray with her voice, she prayed with her heart. For she knew in this way the Lord would hear her. She prayed to surrender the Lordship of Christ long before Christ came into the world. By faith, the Lord heard her prayer. The psalmist David reminds us, commune within your hearts the in the privacy of your room and express your remorse. So we must pray. We must pray humbly. We must pray continuously. We must pray to confess our sins. We must pray to give glory to God. And the Lord who forgives will hear us. 
and answer our prayers. However, our prayers are also something else. Yes, we do pray in the secret of our heart, often alone. But there's another prayer of what we just did today here at church. Another kind of prayer is communal. Christ, who preached unity and priest, does not want us to always pray by ourselves, in private, nor for ourselves alone. He came and gave us a new prayer. A prayer unto the Father. It's known as the Lord's Prayer. Or the Our Father, as I grew up in the Catholic Church, calling it. And in the Sacrament of Confession, in the Catholic Church, Catholic, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, as it is, it is often called. After we gave a formal confession to the priest, so he would give us, in return, a, a penance that consisted of a certain amount of Our Fathers and Hail Marys. And then he would instruct us to go out quietly within the church and carry out that penance. My friends would always be waiting for me, and I was always the last one in church. And they'd say, what's going on? We thought you left. How come you were in there so long? And I always say that the priest gave me a lot of our fathers to say because I wasn't always good. And because I was often bad, I was always saying our fathers, seemingly to the sunset, with a fair numbers of Hail Marys thrown in for good measure. Although this is, was a formal, formal doctrinal procedure of the sacrament within the Catholic Church, what it really did to help me was not only to remember the Lord's Prayer, but to be good and to enjoy praying it. Because I don't know about you, when I say the Lord's Prayer, it feels good. It's a confirmation of faith. And any time that we can do that before the Lord, it is joyful, it is convicting, and it is of the Lord. But above all, Jesus came and was teaching and forming what was to be a brand new covenant of grace through his church on earth. And that it was not for ourselves anymore that each person asked to be forgiven, not to be led into temptation or be delivered from evil. Instead, that we pray in public as a community, as a church, not for one individual, but for all. For the people of God are all one. We are the body of Christ. And Christ becomes the, the teacher of this body through harmony, through peace and unity, and the desire for us all to pray. He even bore all men up into himself alone. And that's something to pray about. You know, prayer isn't always asking for something, brothers and sisters. Prayer is also giving praise and glory for what he's already giving you. Prayer is thanking him for the things that you have. Thanking him for the things that you don't have, which today would be COVID. When we pray, the Lord hears. As this signal, as I'm speaking, is, is being reached to you, there is a signal through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we're in a dark place, when we're alone in our room, we can pray without speaking. And the Lord hears it very audibly. Christ becomes the teacher when he, when he gives us the Our Father. He's teaching us 
that he himself bore the sins of all men. In teaching him, in teaching this, Jesus used the old, the old Testament story of three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who fell bound into the midst of a fiery furnace, a burning fiery furnace. They would sh foreshadow this rule of prayer. So by the witness of Scripture, we might imitate them in our prayers. United in the bond of the Holy Spirit, the three young men began to sing in unison, blessing God. It angered King Nebuchadnezzar. He thought that they would be screaming, no, stop. Instead, they were singing joyfully, singing songs unto the Lord, even in their predicament. And even though Christ had not come and taught them to pray, nevertheless, they spoke to three of them in one voice. Three of them. One voice. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is for this reason that the prayer was per persuasive and productive. For their simple spiritual prayer of peace merited the presence of the Lord. So too, after Christ's ascension up into heaven, in full view of his future church, and after he would commission the apostles to go out and spread the good news, and thus begin his church. We later find the apostles and disciples praying together in the same way. Scripture says they all join together in continuous prayer with the women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Joining together in continuous prayer with the urgency and unity of prayers that declares God who fashioned a bond of unity among those who live in his home. This is from Ephesians 4.3. We'll admit into his divine home for all eternity only those who pray with unity. He will admit into eternity only those who pray in unity. Every Sunday, Christ Church prays in unity all over the world. Every day, we alone pray in unity. Every day, we pray with our families and loved ones in unity. If we didn't pray in unity, we know that we can pray in unity, not with others, but in unity of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Lord's Prayer contains many great mysteries of faith. In these 66 words, the Lord's Prayer contains many mysteries of faith that many volumes of libraries have. Many libraries with many volumes have. 66 words can be what gets us to heaven. In these few words is great spiritual strength. For this small summary of words contains a summary of all the divine teachings of Christ. All of the prayers and petitions in one prayer. So the Lord commands us to pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, not my, our Father. Yes, he is individually ours. But we are his church. He's our Father. Even though we must pray personally and individually, to invite Jesus to personally come into our hearts, we pray as a body. We pray as a church, one faith, one body, one spirit in Christ. For we are a new creation, born and restored by God through his grace. And when we say, Father, we've already begun to be his son. He reminds us of this. 
He came to his home and his people did not receive him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God. So profess your belief. Stand on your words. You are sons and daughters of God. And give him thanks. Call upon God. Give him praise and glory that you are. When we say, hallowed be thy name, we consecrate and sanctify God's name, for it is holy. How compassionate and merciful the Lord is. How he wished us to repeat this prayer in his vision and call on the Lord our Father. And as Jesus, God's only Son, God is our Father. Jesus is our brother. Growing up when I did, my father wasn't always around. And, and, and I had many father figures in my life. And I remember one, one nun, Sister Carmelita. She knew my testimony. She knew the whole story. And she always says, you're not alone, Peter. God will always be with you. I took that, and I held on to that. And through anything that you're going through today, obviously we're going through something very great with COVID. But before COVID, we still had issues. We still had things that were on our heart, things in our family, things with our occupations. Things that we did to others that we didn't confess. Maybe our faith was weak. Maybe we had no faith at all. COVID just seemed to magnify everything. Now we're, we're on our knees and we're praying harder than we ever have before. But what happens when COVID ends? Are we going to stop praying like that? Or is this going to be the new us? Are we going to pray with more ferocity? Are we going to pray with more regularity? Or is it just only reserved that kind of prayer for these difficult times? Something to think about and chew on, brothers and sisters. God allows trial in our, our lives, in this world, in order to draw us closer to him. He doesn't do it because he's mean or just wants to punish us and, and, and see how we react. He wants to spend all of eternity with us. But we have some work to do in this, this earthly life, this test. However long that is, we have work to do. And part of that work is prayer. And part of that, a main part of that prayer, is the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Although we're living in a fallen world, and it's hard, we must be temples of God so that God lives in us and we in him. In doing so, no acts of ours should be unworthy of the Spirit. All of our thoughts, words, and actions must be spiritual. They must be of the Lord, not of the world. As I say that, I know how hard it is. As you hear it, you know how hard it is. Left to ourselves, it would be hard enough in this world with the materialism, with all the things, with all the trials, with all the temptations. But we have a lot more that we have to consider, especially when we grow older, we have families. You younger Christians, you have a lot on your plate. You have a lot to pray about. Many of you are praying right now whether or not you're going to go back to school with seeing your friends like it was before. A lot of stuff right now is, is causing us to, to think more 
perhaps be negative more, to fear more. But what it should do is to allow us to pray more. And if you don't know how to pray, if you don't know what to pray, if you feel like, oh, I just don't, not like those, some people at church that they just, when they pray, they really, the words are just, I don't know how to pray. Jesus says you do. Because he gave you a prayer. And that prayer is everlasting. That prayer, even if you didn't do any prayer for the rest of your life, if you said this prayer, as you got up in the morning before you started your day, and when your head hits the pillow after your day was done, two times saying the Our Father and living the words in that time in between, in our days between morning and night. You will spend all of eternity with the Lord in heaven. God said in 1 Samuel 2.30, Those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be despised. Later, Paul wrote to the often difficult and, and divided church in Corinth, you are not your own, he said. You were purchased with a great price. So glorify and bear God in your body. Continuing with the first sentence of the Lord's Prayer, when we utter, hallowed be thy name, it is not that we should feel that we make God holy by our prayers. But, we, but what we are asking, we're asking God that his name be made holy in us. For God is the source of all holiness. Still, because he himself said, Be holy, for I am holy. That was from 1 Peter. So we pray that we have, by our baptism, been consecrated to persevere, persevere in what we have begun. Our spiritual journey, our life on earth, and when saying this prayer daily, this Lord's Prayer, we confirm our need for daily sanctification because we sin every day in some way. If you ever hear anybody says, I never sin, pray for them. They just don't know it. We're, we live in a sinful world. Some of the, some of the people who I knew that thought they were the worst sinners and prayed the most were those that were cloistered in convents and monasteries. So there you have it. We live out in the world. We should have a lot more of the world that we must pray about and how it affects us. Because the world is like a ball rolling down a hill. I used to tell the youth this. It can't reverse itself. So we must be, through prayer, we must be going in the opposite direction against those strong currents of the world. And I think in God's creation, the wonders of God's creation, I, th I think of a fish called a salmon. And I think of how the salmon, when it goes back to its spawning grounds, it has to swim upstream through strong currents while all the other fish are swimming downstream. And it swims upstream to go back so it can give life. And then it dies. If we, through our prayers, if we, through saying our fathers, the Lord's Prayer for others, can help us swim against the strong currents of sin in this world and perhaps get us a little closer to helping someone else have life. Your kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
We are praying when we say your kingdom come, we're praying that God's kingdom will be present in us in the very same way that his name is hallowed in us. When does God not reign? He's reigning always, and he'll reign still. And the kingdom that is promised to us and won for us was by Christ's cross and resurrection. And that kingdom will come for us after we pick up our cross, whatever that is, illness, sin, many things. We must pick up our cross and follow the Lord. I, I once was uh, counseling a, a very rich man. He had more money than I will have in 10 lifetimes. And he couldn't really see it. He couldn't really see like why he had to humble himself. And I reminded him of the story of the rich ruler. When he came to Jesus and asked, how can I be a part of your kingdom? Jesus told him, sell all your belongings, pick up your cross, and follow me. The man was, he didn't know, he didn't know what to do. He, he knew that that would be so difficult for him. He was forlorn. If he can't do it, what about us? Billy Graham once said, you never saw a, a moving van following your hearse after you die with your stuff. We can't take the things with us when we go. The only thing we can take with us is a pure heart. A pure heart that has been forgiven. And when we say the Lord's Prayer, we're encompassing not only life, but death. Not only praise, but forgiveness. The Lord's Prayer is Christ himself because it is his coming that we long for. We have been slaves to this world. But there'll be a time where we, ha we cannot be. There'll be a time when we, and that time is now, really, through, through the, this great pandemic. Everybody should be looking within. Everybody should be taking inventory of, of themselves, their lives. How has it been up until this point? This point of COVID in our lives, whether we're young, whether we're old. This, this is a lightning strike upon our lives. It's gonna leave a mark. It is a defining period of time, not unlike the Spanish flu was in 1918 or World War II was in the 1940s. Significant things that happen in our lives that fill history books, they all originate by the Lord. It's funny that because everything begins and ends with the Lord, a lot of our textbooks in public schools for children doesn't mention that. They can't mention it. But here in church, we can. Till we're blue in the face, till we're, we're crying with tears, we could mention it. When we say in the Lord's Prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we pray that for God's will to do this, that, he, that we can carry it out through his will. How can anyone prevent the Lord from doing what he wills? However, in our prayer, we ask that God's will be done in us. Satan puts up obstacles. 
puts up roadblocks, like if we're traveling on the road, there's, there's construction obstacles of stop. This is how Satan works in our life. We're driving, we're, we're praying, we're going to fellowship, everything's going well, we're on the road towards heaven, all of a sudden there's all this construction that causes us to, to have to go over into a ditch. When I lived in Arizona, there was a, um, I don't see it here, but uh, construction, uh, when they do construction there, um, they typically have signs on the freeway, don't follow the trucks. I never knew what that meant until someone told me. You know, when workers are working on the freeways, there are trucks that have to go off down into into the middle there to park in order to work to do and people just blindly you know we're on the freeway we're just following other cars and cars are always following us people would follow those trucks into the ditch so they had to have a sign don't follow the trucks the lord's prayer is a sign in a sense to don't follow satan don't follow your own will follow god's will Your will will be done on earth. God's will will be done on earth. Christ's will be done on earth. The Holy Spirit is moving all around to keep us from not following the person in front of us that's going to lead us down into the ditch. To say they are Father is to keep us above that. To keep us always from stepping and, and going from where we shouldn't go. Hopefully catching us from not saying the things that we should say or we shouldn't say. Still we sin. Still we fall. God's will will be done in us if we allow it. If we don't get so caught up with the things of this world and allow God, allow the Lord to intercede, to allow Christ to intercede for us to the Father. We need, we need God's will in the form of help and protection. We need His grace. No one could be strong and have the strength to do it alone or secure enough without God's mercy and forgiveness. Even Jesus the night before His death showed weakness a weakness through his human nature that he bore. For he said, and we can't blame him, Father, if possible, let this cup pass from me. He felt that because he knew he saw it already. He almost felt it. And the blood that came out of his skin as he prayed was fear he knew the great pain he would suffer he knew the spectacle he would be made but he also knew that that's why the father sent him to this earth through by his death a new covenant can be made covenant of law would end. The covenant of grace would begin by his grace, by his death. Not of my will, but yours, Lord. Everything that Christ did and taught was the will of God. And his humility must be ours today. Humility in our daily lives is difficult, but necessary. It's not always seen, but it's appreciated by the Lord. That, along with an unwavering faith, a discipline, 
a love for others. Having a readiness to suffer harm so that we can save others. Exuding a peace, a peace beyond all understanding is also very important. Along with loving God with all of our heart because He is our Father. Fearing Him because He is God. Clinging to His love because He is love. Standing by Christ's cross with courage and loyalty whenever conflict or comes up in his, over His name. How many of you out there have been persecuted in some way because you invoked Christ's name. It doesn't happen a lot in the United States, or at least it, it didn't as much as it is now. There's a lot of division right now. It's like the world is being torn into two. And you can see it. Those who know the Lord are with the Lord. Not through the, the neck up, up here, but in the heart. And those that do not know the Lord, don't want to know the Lord, that are in love with the world and are upset that COVID has disrupted their lives in this world. It's a lot to pray about. And I encourage you to say, a lot of our fathers in this regard. I encourage you to, to think about the words of the Lord's Prayer. Christ taught us, I am the bread of life which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats my bread will live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh for the life of the world. Christ makes clear that anyone who eats this bread, and we will celebrate this today through Holy Communion, Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This is why communion, the partaking of bread as Christians, one to another, sharing a meal together, is so important. The union and communion with God is our salvation. We pray for our daily bread. Christ gives it to us. And that bread is his body. He who eats this bread will live forever. Christ gave it to us. So by his help, we'll be able to live and abide in him and never be separated from his body and his grace. God told us to pray this prayer, the Our Father, which we will do together in a, in a few minutes. Not just through words, rotely saying them, trying to remember what comes after each sentence. 66 words of love. 66 words of everything that is contained in the Bible in one prayer. The hope, the joy, the fear, the love. Although Christ, although Christ's life and death and resurrection, through it, he wants us to be sanctified. Sanctified from this dark and dying world. Sanctified through the Holy Spirit. Jesus came down to heaven to save us, brothers and sisters, not only from Satan's clutches, not only from COVID, but save us from ourselves. Save us from the thoughts that leads to sin our sinful nature. God loves us so much that he gave up his only son. That all would believe in him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Heavenly Father, this message is you. This message is, is you through your son, Jesus Christ, giving up his life so that we would have it, giving us a prayer as a, as a template to be able to achieve everlasting life with you in heaven. Lord, you give us a full life. 
40, 50, 60 years, 70, 80 for those who are strong. And this life that you give us is a test. A test that we don't always pass. A test that we sometimes need to look up what the words are because we don't know it in our heart. A test that is only going to be more great. Lord, what we're going through now is no different than what the world has gone through before, through plagues and wars, through great calamities, through personal loss, through breakups of, of, of jobs and, and buildings under typhoons, to the breakup of families. Lord God of strength and mercy, help us. Help us to say this prayer every day. Help us to know what we're saying when we say it. And help us to lean on the grace of your love that we'll be able to manifest it in our lives. Amen. Let's pray, the, let's pray this prayer together right now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Amen. The Lord has commanded us to observe the Holy Communion. And then despite this uh, challenging time, we continue to follow the Lord's command. And then uh, uh, we come to his table uh, and observe the uh, communion together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you set up the Lord's table so that we can be always remembering you, that your son Jesus Christ, who about to be dying on the cross, and he set up this important meal so that we can remember his body broken for us, his blood shed for us. Now we come before you, Lord. Cleanse our heart and examine ourselves to see if there is anything that makes us unworthy of the table. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, may you cleanse us. We come before you with a repentant heart. Mm -hmm. Through the participating the Holy Communion, may our heart be reunited with yours, and only that but we be reunited with our brothers and sisters. And I pray all of these in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, it says, So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. So Lord, as we come before the Lord's table, uh, that we follow the Lord's command and re-examine ourselves. Is there anything that we have done and that is sinning against God and then sinning against uh, His holy grace and we ask for the forgiveness? And if we have a sin, we have been sinning against our brothers and sisters, we are about to partake the bread that also symbolize the body of Christ, the church. And then if we are sinning against our brothers and sisters, our family members, uh, our friends, that we ask uh, for the Lord's forgiveness. And if you have done anything that was sinning against our body, the one that is given by the Lord, and then any, if we encounter anything that is uh, that's sexually immoral, and the Bible said that we are against our own body. We also ask 
the Lord to forgive us. If we ever sing something that we are not, we are watch something that supposed not supposed to watch, and then may the Lord consecrate us, cleanse us as well as well. Now, as we are about to partake the bread and cup, I like to invite brother and sister. Let's just spend a few minutes, and then that we can prepare ourselves and come to the Lord. And if there's anything that makes us unworthy of the Holy Communion, we ask the Lord to forgive us. And so there's no sin that's a hinder between him and us. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took out a cup, and says, this is a new covenant in my blood. Do this in, rem in remembrance of me. And for whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we partake the bread and the cup, we are also anticipating the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and then, so that we can be reunited with him in heaven. Now, may I ask the usher please come forward? And then, dear brothers and sisters, that wherever you are, whether you have elements or not, and I'd like you to invite you to join us as well. And may your heart be prepared for this as well. Dear brothers and sisters, those who are here, along with those who are joining through watching the video, this is a, the body of Christ broken for you. Let's partake together. Dear brothers and sisters, the brother of our Lord Jesus Christ, share for us. Let's partake together. Thank you. And I'd like to invite Pastor P uh, to close in prayer. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, there's a part that says, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, that daily bread was you 
You gave up your life so that we can have life. And in communion of what we partake today, it remembers that. It remembers that well, that great act of humility that you gave to all the world. And it is with joy that we can celebrate this with you. Give us this day our daily bread, Lord. Give us your word. Help it to be a sword that pierces our hearts. Help us to hear what we need to hear through all the noises of this world right now. Help us to draw closer to you. Allow this to be the first day of the rest of our lives. Committed to reciting this simple prayer that you gave us, a prayer unto you, Jesus. And Lord, we just ask for blessings through these prayers that all of us and our loved ones will be safe, will be well, will be able to use this time as God intended it, to draw closer and closer to you within our hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here. I find my rest without you I fall apart You're the one that guides my heart Lord, I need you Oh, I need you Every hour I need you my
let's continue our worship uh, with the uh, announcements of our uh, church family. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the America and uh, the church in, uh, in America has never been so in need for prayers like the moment now. And I thank God uh, for bringing the tiny message to Pastor P about prayer. And then we cannot overemphasize the importance of a prayer at this time. The prayers will connect us with the Lord, will bring us to be the right mindset with the Lord. We don't know how he's going to lead. We don't know how long this pandemic is going to last until that someday you might may perhaps that unfortunately it hit our family. Then we'll realize that how painful it is. But let's pray. Let's pray as if that we can suffer with those who are suffering. Let's pray that 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 we uh, that it's as if that we can suffer with those who are in, are sick, are infected, uh, financially or or health wise. Let's pray. Pray for those people and then pray for our family and pray consistently, pray constantly. And then we want to thank God for, again for the online summer camp. Uh, and then uh, please pray for the possibility of, of extending it uh, for the two churches in Chula Vista so the children can also enjoy this wonderful program. Uh, the Lord closed the door for our tower missions that we don't know why, but law is in control. But we pray that he will give us other opportunity for missions. And although without the international traveling fund, we continue uh, to, to be able to do missions. And then we thank God for the opportunity. Uh, please do pray for that. Uh, if the program can include the uh, Chula Vista children, and then that will be great. And then uh, Sunday school will take a break, uh, as we announced last week. And then MANA, after Thursday session, will also take a break. Uh, we all will be resumed in the beginning, the first week of September, right? And then please pray that we are planning for the programs. And then please also pray that we, the Lord will raise up more teachers and as, as group leaders who will be willing to serve through leading uh, the discussions, through teaching the materials. Yeah, and then every week I would, uh, from now on, a few weeks back, actually, I have already sent out through our weekly communication, and then Tina also sent out uh, the church bulletin weekly. Uh, it contains the prayer request in there. Yeah, so please remember those things in your prayer. And then now, uh, I'd like to invite all of you, if you can, would you please stand where you are? And then we want to give a thanks for the Lord, uh, for, the, for the offering today, and then also give you the benediction. And then shall we all rise. Lord, thank you for abundantly providing us. You have given us the spiritual food to nurture our spiritual body. Thank you for the word of God and then constantly being taught and preached through your faithful servants. Lord, we also thank you for providing us financially so that we can continue to use to further your kingdom. Consecrate the offering today and then give us wisdom to use them and to further your kingdom. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love from our Heavenly Father, the communion from the Holy Spirit be with you all, from now on until eternity. Amen.